and then la, 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 la. Just... no not that shut up <laughs> <laughs> you're attacked by assassins yes I want to open this up just so I could do a link there we go close the main that shit so you guys make your way over to the way for his work eat I'll repeat, I swear. One. And the place itself, um, it is still busy, like, uh, definitely by, like, any other standards in any part of the mainland. Like, this place is still busy. Like, it's packed. But it's not filled to the brim with people standing and, you know, sort of, like, trying to steal seats wherever they can, like last night. It's so, it's slightly less busy in that sense. So, go you, I suppose. Also, this music is way too quiet with that. There you go. And yeah, you guys um, see waiting outside uh, a meal. And the woman who you assume to be Emil's girlfriend, um, f for better or worse, uh, it may be it's very amusing, smirkedly so, or disheartening and scary, uh, criminally so. Uh, you see that his girlfriend is dressed in city watch gear, albeit not like the full kit, but just like the general, like under, like, uh, so it's like. She doesn't have, like, a crest on to signify she's on duty. She has, like, a helmet on and stuff like that. But she has, like, just the general, like, halfway and stuff like that on. She's in kit, but not in dude, on duty. So you guys spot that. And Lexody is there. You guys re recognize her from the night before. And, you know, the picture for her is still in the way for his fork. Chad, you guys need a more visual uh, interpretation of her. Hey, over here! Let me like fly you guys down. I'm sure the Minotaur, formerly known as Ratsy, would <laughs> remark on the fact of there being a City Watch member at dinner when you guys just performed a criminal activity and Acer is a criminal. I don't know how he would posit the question. You probably just would. say that. Yeah. Is it going to be okay? I'm you? <laughs> Her? Just... Don't I've done nothing. I've done nothing illegal. Nothing they can prove. <laughs> See? And credit to the guards of this town. They're very lawful. You guys approach. <laughs> that time you showed up. Don't worry. We weren't waiting here that long. About, I don't know, five, ten minutes tops. That means I said, talk to the levy and he scored us a boof. <laughs> Oh, awesome! This is always big good. enough. Uh, oh no, I no no. It's a big. It's like a full, and he does like a like a two hundred seventy degree arc, like almost a full circle. It's a big one. Don't worry. Nice. Could you remind me, Crash? Because I, I, I'm not sure if she was introduced last session. Luxury, luxury, luxury. Uh, yeah, uh, luxury is Tharbium's, uh, according to him, druidic um, compatriot. Not significant other or anything like that. No, no shipping here. Buddies. But yeah, they're buddies. They're friends. And Darwin okay. wanted to invite her. And that is the uh, woman in the green sort of hoodie. Yeah, yeah. I okay. wouldn't call it a hoodie. It's like a more like a polish, oh, I guess. Shawl. Yeah, shawl. Yeah, shawl. Gotcha. And, you know, you know Emil, well, it's pretty obvious who she is, just from the fact that she's with Emil and his significant other. But, you know, Tharbium greets Lexodi in earnest. They begin conversing in Nevros with one another before he introduces her to you guys. This is Lexodi. I was mentioning her before. She does, like, a low bow to you guys. Thank you for returning or trying to return Darbium's items back to him. In yeah. Nevros, uh, I reply, it is a pleasure to meet you. 
a uh, friend sure. of Tarbium's is, uh, I suppose, at this time, by, by now, a friend of ours. He replies in turn, same language. A pleasure to you as well. And likewise. Nah, come on. No point standing around here. And uh, he, Emil spots Acer. <laughs> Why are you here? They invited me. Ha! <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> All right. It's definitely going to be something. Uh, I want to... A point of notice. Um, For you, Cork, yeah, you have like two levels of exhaustion. You look tired. I'm not saying to the same degree or magnitude of exhaustion or tiredness but emil looks like he's also on that track as well he looks like there's a bit of sway and swagger to his step of like he's just been tired. on caffeine high all day and it's wearing off basically um his girlfriend does <laughs> keep him steady but he turns on his heel almost like falling by doing such a sudden spin oh shit uh, oh thanks uh everyone this is katia my girlfriend she does like a really sheepish, weak smile at you guys. Hello. Hello. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, Rose holds out her hand. You too. Shakes I got it. my Rose. Katya. Well, you're you right. Know that. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, now seriously, I'm ready to clap, so I want to sit down. <laughs> Emil begins going forward again. That makes two of us. Yeah, what happened to you? You look almost as you look worse than me, <laughs> and that's saying something. I had tea with Darcy and Orist. You what? <laughs> Katya, that he goes. <laughs> yep. Like it sounds like she would rather believe that you met. Like she, it sounded like a more believable tale to her if you had told her that you had discovered the secret of immortality. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I promised, promised to uh, tell Ritzi the story of uh, dinner, so I might as well tell the story to all of you, if you're interested. Yeah, let's go inside then. Let's. I am starving. <laughs> Same. Mm. <laughs> Thorbeard just nods. And you guys are like, yeah, Thorbeard's been working since morning till now. In repentance. I could eat a horse. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, not, too, not too surprising. And, you know, the Minotaur form of the nose, Reitzi, who also helped him in that endeavor for a few hours, so, yeah. And you guys have already really gotten to eat anything all day. You guys had breakfast, but other than that, you guys have just been bouncing around. So, yeah, you guys are walking around all day, I might add. Yeah, you guys are pretty hungry. So, you guys enter in. Uh, Billy shouts ab above the hustle and bustle welcome. But you guys notice something. You know how before I was saying, like, when you saw Katya, you know, who's dressed in city guard attire, that it's, like, amusingly, like, smirkedly amusing or or heart-wrenchingly chilling? Yeah, get rid of that first option. Because uh, you guys see, talking to Billy, Royal Guard Inquisitor Bella Lessel. <laughs> She's back. Oh, hello. <laughs> you guys also note that as you guys enter into the establishment, it's actually quieter in here than out there. <laughs> Is there more people inside? There are no, no. It's there's not more people. It still is packed, okay. uh, except for one one booth which Levy reserved for you guys. But you could tell that the presence of a royal guard inquisitor is a bit of a a dowering thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she's just she looks over at you guys like up from her little notepad that she writes in. She looks over at you guys. Waves. All of your only perception. Gonna get a four. <laughs> I, I mean, don't think I've rolled, like, a single thing above 10. Oh, wait, no, I had a 12 at some point. Oh, actually, hmm. Do you have advantage? Because how close? Ro roll again. Roll, roll again. For y'all. For all of us? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Or, or rather, for Korik, we take your first number because advantage, disadvantage weighs out. For the other two of you, just roll again. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Well, it's luckily with an advantage, so we don't actually take that. Oh, yeah. well, we do take is that 18. <laughs> yeah, so... Core 22, uh, Fia 18. You guys notice Acer duck behind the combined large, basically flesh wall of Tharbium and Ritzi. 
Like he just like like a ghost. And this is before Bella looks at you guys. Well, well. She gets like a chiding smirk, and she says, only slightly jokingly, only slightly. Criminals returning to the scene of the crime. I mean, we told you we were going to be here, so. Yes, I didn't expect it to be when I was here, though. Eighth, again, Miss Billy, last remark. Do you, are you sure? I'm sure. Don't worry. Look at the place. It's what I fixed up. Yeah, it is, but just because the results are... No, no. It's my establishment, isn't it? Yes. Then I don't care. Very well. Stows away the pencil and the notepad. Then that's all I'll be asking for you, and I'm sure you're busy as... She looks around at the place, especially you guys who just entered as a huge party. I'm sure you're busy as is. <laughs> kind of you to notice. Uh, Bella, like, tips her hat. Good day. Good day. Do you want a drink before you... No. I'm good. But anyway. She walks past you guys, and you guys just sort of give her a wide berth. Acer is actually, like, you, like trying know. to turn turn <laughs> right in Darby as if they're, like, a mobile shield. Have a good night. Bye. I'll just sort of... She tilts you... She tilts her head at you, her head, a hat at you guys. Try not to start any more trouble tonight. <laughs> yep. She walks away. I'm just gonna lean back and look at Asher. So, uh, Acer. 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 Why did I say Asher? I don't know, because there's sure in it. <laughs> I, I can't read it that. Because of it. Because of it. Yeah. I yeah uh, I, I don't know I can't read I think that's just I can't read my own handwriting. Um, so Acer, like, Acer yeah not Asher. Um, it's like hey so uh, what are you doing? You know so, hiding. He's like rolling frantically rolling a coin between his knuckles as if ready to pop it like he did before. That's a long story. I was expecting to see her here. Like, yeah, I can tell. A legal story or awkward ex story? <laughs> You're very funny. I'm trying my best. I'd prefer not to tell. Right. Uh, we have a lot list of stories to go through today, anyways. Ironic. Mm -hmm. Of all the things you wanted to tell us, that's one thing you weren't. Acer gets an unamused look at Abigail. Just noting. Maybe I get enough drinks. Maybe I'll tell it. But for the time being, no. <laughs> a little well, chidingly, I will look at Abigail and I'll say, come on now. A man must have at least the pretense of being allowed to keep a few secrets to facilitate an air of mystery. No? True, but... <laughs> he always seems so prying when it comes to our matters, so I think it's only fitting we return the favor. Talk to me later when I'm drunk. <laughs> Very well. Come on, let's sit. You guys huddle into a booth, which you know, it's not even like two seventy degrees of like a circle. It's like it's like a square, except like the court just the corner. Not even the bars that lead to that corner are cut out. And it's it's a pretty big booth. So it's like like I've sat, I've sat, sat in, sat, I've sat in one of Satan. these booths. <laughs> yeah, I've sat in one of these booths before. They're really, they're really something. It's like that. The table goes like that. And it's just a gap in one spot so everyone could scoot around it. Basically, you guys have to base. It's hell for whoever has to go to the yeah. bathroom and you're in the middle. <laughs> you always want the edge seats. Basically. It's like being that on an airplane. I think, you want I think edge seats do, do belong to Ratsy and Tharbium. Yeah. For obvious yeah. reasons. Yeah. <laughs> For obvious reasons, of, they're not sitting otherwise. Um, I don't... I'm gonna put your tokens on this, just so I know. Because um, I don't know exactly how big I should draw it. 
So just put your tokens. I don't have a token for there we go. Katya or Acer or anyone like that. So that's a bit problematic. So. Yeah, I'll draw like a, just a general square. So it's like, that is really hard to see. Yeah, like, it's, it's not a great color. Big. Make it like brighter color. There, yeah. So, say. No, no, that's that's oh. a table. Not there the, we go. <laughs> that makes more. That makes more sense. No, she's going to sit in the middle of the table. Um, uh, where's the oh. entrance, so to speak? Would it be like uh, bottom here? left. Okay. okay. Say star beam is like here, and then red C would be where is it? Yeah, I don't have tokens for like a meal and them. Uh, do I have like cities to? Nope, I do not. You have the picture though. I have the picture, but fucking fucking looks weird as shit. So I'm not gonna use it. Lex. <laughs> Color. Size. Bigger. Drinks. Yeah, letters. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy and paste it like two more times to be. Meal. Cut. 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 What the fuck? It's not letting me change it. There we go. Cut. Slightly smaller. There we go. There we go. And last but not least, I'm just going to put the criminal. I'm just going to say ace. <laughs> then sure. Ace. Even though his name is spelled differently, that's the first phonetic uh, syllable of it. So yeah, I guess I can, I can, I can just do this. I'll leave it out. Wait, 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 wait a minute. This is off. God damn it. There we go. So, yeah. You guys are at the Wayfarer's Fork. I don't have a long list of food for you guys to consume this time. You know, maybe if I didn't spend a couple hours looking for Acer's theme, I probably would have had that done. But, oh, well. <laughs> Uh, fuck it, we'll just say you get a repeat of last night. So garlic naan, curry, schnitzel, fried Pop chicken. chicken. Yep. Goblin chicken, fries, you know the works. Clam chowder. The works. Yeah, well, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with it. You, I uh, mean, you guys are fucking starving, so... My only yeah. question, does the exhaustion make Cork eat slower or make him eat faster because he's hungrier? I mean, Cork eats faster anyways. Faster. <laughs> Maybe, like, messier? <laughs> Sorry. Extremely efficiently. <laughs> Surprisingly efficiently. As you guys like punch your on the table and just goes to the left. You guys punch in your orders with uh Billy directly. Um after you guys pass by her and then you get yourself seated, both food and drink orders and stuff like that. Oh Luxury. Hmm. Uh Cork here. He's I know. He looks very feeble. Hmm. Can you help? Of course. Anything for a friend. And I shall be in your ca capable hands. Varric whispers to Abigail, didn't you message someone? Yes, and the fact that they're not here means that they didn't want to show up. Right. Right. Not surprising. <laughs> uh, Lexity uh, or pulls out like this little leather pouch and uh, opens it up and begins like uh, upending it and like dropping its contents onto the table. It's a bunch of gems or not gems, stones, really glitterly, glitterly, uh, glittery and bright, sparkly. Um, Fia, you know what this is? Mm -hmm. 
Cork, roll me your background. Again, straight, no disadvantage or disadvantage. And Rose, roll me your background as well, but with advantage. All right. Uh, where? I know I set yeah, it up. Cork. There you are. Yeah, Cork, yeah, I know that is. Mm. Hey, yeah. good. Uh, Sophia and Rose, you guys know that this is Starstone. So this is, like... Is that one of the Outland a, materials? It is an Outland material. That's what I thought. It's a... It's a commodity from Gathothalor. It's a major point of trade between the provinces and Gathothalor. And it's basically, like, a geographically locked resource that only elves have. Which is why it's such a huge point of trade. How big is the yeah. piece that she has? Oh, it's not a piece. It's many pieces. A bunch of pebbles, or stones, like smooth stones. Something you find in a river. About seven of them. About, in terms of length from your the tip of your finger to the second line of your finger. She has many of them. Then she waves her hand over them, and then they just sort of magically just... <laughs> line up <laughs> almost like magnetically mm -hmm. what did you come across those may i ask they are gifts from my tribe huh I'm a hundred percent certain Ratsy would be all over this but O's not here right now so mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later but yeah, she holds out her hand and then it begins like levitating and then sort of floating, like forming a circle and like orbiting her hand. Now, uh, Lexuri, both in the original game and in this game, is a, an 11th level druid, and uh, druids have greater restoration. So, <laughs> I believe they have greater restoration. Let's find out. They should. I'm like 95% certain. They do. Okay. Now, I think she has only one spell, so let me double check. Next city. No, nope, she has two. She has two first or fifth level spell slots. Hey. Uh she she casts greater restoration upon you. Doubly so. Uh you see that the all you see that the star stones that are orbiting her just begin glowing brighter, making them true to their, like, they, the glitter and sparkle of them begins glowing brighter, but the rest of the stone in which it's embedded begins going dark, almost as if she, true to their name, they are holding, like, bits of the night sky. They begin sort of trailing, breaking the circle that's sort of orbiting her hand, trailing off, and then giving you a crown, like a sort of spinning halo i guess of stars and then you guys see just just two bright flashes of light and cork every like it's it's really instantaneous like they're both back to back casts but you feel doubly so your burdens lifted Because greater uh, restoration is in action. How many, how many levels of exhaustion is that? I think you had three. I do. So I still have one. Okay. Nothing a good night's rest can't fix. Literally. Yeah. So you no longer have disadvantage on saving throws and ability checks, and your speed is now normal. No, he still has disadvantage on ability checks at level one. Yes. There are attack rolls. There yes. Correct. The more important ability checks. Mm, yeah, mm. very true. Uh, the, the two flashes of light cause Rose would, to kind of flinch. <laughs> Anyways, would Korik, if being fluent in Nebros, would he know uh, if there's a uh, like a hand gesture or anything like that of uh, gratitude or of thanks? Um, you, the, there's no like gesture for it. There's just saying thank you, which off the top of my head, gratiatos is thank you. Lier gratiatos is thank you very much. All right. Uh, in, in that case, he would simply place a hand over his heart, and he would say, Vierka Tiatos. She bends, like she leans forward, bending, bowing slightly. 
Tharbim is like a really wise smile on his face, like kind of like a proud parent almost. Or or no, it's it's more akin to like, see, I told you my brother could kick your brother's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Like a proud sibling. And the stones now back to their original luster float away from you. And Lixiri just holds out her pouch and then just they just trail back in. She closes it off and sets it aside. That's quite the trick. See? Lixiri! The best healer I know. That is very generous. No, it is very true. <laughs> it's like a bit awkward at that. She's not used to receiving attention for her deeds. Seems. Well, you have my gratitude. You have my thanks. Fia, you, Acer leans over to you and whispers to you, those two are really, they're just good people, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes me feel guilty, really. Oh, I'm well past that. Now it makes me feel disgusted. <laughs> For you. Good people? Grotesque. <laughs> oh, how dare they? Uh, and now, now you sound like that noble guy at the docks. The, everyone, the one that everyone called a chopper. What's a chopper well, anyways? you're so a dear sir. That's so a chopper to you, my good yeah. lad. <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, That's literally just like Sir Cunt or Sir Douchebag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what... Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Vaguely what it translates to. 